Evening, everybody, and welcome to Bovis Raven. Firstly, I'd like to thank you all for, for joining us tonight. Really appreciate you, you coming on. I know there's a few football matches on the television, but I say I really appreciate it. I'm not going to mention the last two games. I know some of you might, might bring them up, but a little bit disappointing, the, the results. Middlesbrough game, second half, a few positives. Uh, we, can, we can take from that. Obviously, the two young lads coming on thought they did very well and probably deserved to get some in that second half. So we've got to take that on to, to Swansea on Saturday. And fingers crossed we can get three points. I think we need to start picking some points up or we could be in a little bit of trouble. Uh, just before we meet as, as guest tonight, uh, I know you're on, on mute. If you want to ask a question, just either press the raise your hand icon or write it in the chat and I will come to you and, and, and ask, ask the questions. So tonight's guest... I know they don't take any introducing or to, to any time. For, I know you're all on here and I'm, I know you're all known. But, and again, I'd just like to thank him for giving the time. Obviously, if you knew her and you were Roberts, even if he, you were. How are you, Boozy? How, How are you, mate? You all right? Very well, thank you. How are you doing? If I, I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to start with you and obviously thanking you both for giving your time. But if he's, you might not be able to see a lot of him, but he's been to the Burnley Fulham game. He's, he's working tonight. He's obviously a referee assessor or a referee assistant. If I do, and yeah, he, that'll he do. Said, that's about right. Is that is that all right, Tiff? <laughs> yeah, that'll do. Me. <laughs> well, obviously, if he, how would how would the Burnley game? Just I know we might watch our matches the day today, but what would it worth watching? And, and did the referee make any dodgy decisions for you to have to have a go at him tomorrow? Well, I might stay up for the Everton Man City game. I wouldn't necessarily stay up for the Burnley Fulham <laughs> game. I think that's fair to say. Um, it wasn't a classic, an honest game, and obviously both teams near the bottom, but it wasn't a classic. Not loads for the referee to do. The odd clash, you know, he, he had to speak to Scott Parker because they were getting wound up on the other side with the touch with the two two managers at times. But that's natural, it's competitive. But um no, it wasn't the best of games. So I think I'll give that a miss then, if I think. Right, so <laughs> yeah. yeah. Going back, obviously we started. We're talking. We brought, brought, brought got you both on to obviously talk about the early nineties, and you both came to the club in completely different different paths. You in starting with you, you were record signing two hundred seventy five thousand. Yeah. Uh, could you just replace Craig Maskell, who was a firm town favourite? You were only 21, 22, so you must have felt. A lot of pressure on, on your shoulders at that time joining joining us. I think I think the pressure I felt boo this showed in my performances in the first in the first half of that season, I think. Um it was hard, mate. It, it was hard. And I think because because of the transfer fee, which was I mean, it was a in today's transfer market, it, it, it's a pittance, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? But back then well, it back was then, a lot of money. Though, back then. Yeah. Yeah, um, and, and you know the club was spending a lot of money on this unproven unknown, if you like, who who who'd been at Watford for five years and played nearly seventy games for them. And I was replacing Craig Mask, who was a massive fan's favourite, and scored plenty of goals. Different type of player to myself, and yeah, I I did I, did, I found it really really difficult. It's the first time I'd moved, and you'll know yourself as. As a player, it doesn't matter how many times you walk into a, a new dressing room, it's a horrible experience. Unless you've got a mate there or yeah. you, you've played with someone before and that sort of softens the blow, it makes it slightly easier. But if you're going to a, a dressing room full of un, unknown lads who you don't know, it's hard work, I tell you. And that, yeah, th those first six months, they were hard, but I probably... Made me a stronger character, really. Um, took took quite a bit of stick, and I could I could understand why because I wasn't playing well, I wasn't scoring the goals that that the club had, had paid all that money for me. Um, and I think looking back, I think we played at Valley Parade in the second half of that season. We were we were two nil down, and and you know at Valley Parade you you go into the changing room through that corner, don't you? Where all the, the, corner, all the away yes. fans go and. I mean, we had, we must have had, well, we had half of that stadium. We had behind the goal and then down the, the one of the touchlines, not where down the main side, side is. Yes. And like we're, we're losing the game 2 0 at half time and we've gone in and all the 
venom and the frustration from the town fans, which you can understand, was pointed at me sort of thing. Anyway, we came out for the second half. We drew 2-2. I scored both in a local derby. And I think that's that's the moment that I think my town career sort of turned and things clicked. Um, and I think that's that's when I started to sort of repay the faith that the club had shown in me by, by spending all that money. Yeah, brilliant. It probably took you a while to, to settle in as well, didn't it? And it, it, won't, it won't easy. Uh, and, and you know what town fans are like. They don't. They don't give as much. They don't give you time to settle in very often. If you don't do it in three do, they, or four do you know matches, do you know what? I, I, the fans are the same wherever you go, mate. Wherever you go, because um, they're, they're passionate about their football club, and, and and rightly so. You know, they 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 support the team through thick and thin. Um, and I, th- I think it's probably more frustration than than anything else that I wasn't performing. Yeah. Yeah, really. And, and if uh, go, you go in the same, you completely different path to you. And ninety nine point nine percent of footballers go through the academy. We, I was YTS. You were you, you were apprentice. YTS, or, yeah, yeah. French. I was too. I was. Yeah, I was. I was. I was too old for YTS for the. Anyway, <laughs> I didn't want to say. I didn't want to say you. <laughs> Obviously, if you stayed at you stayed at school, went to college, and then Bradford University. Yeah. And then obviously, how did Huddersfield see you? And and what did you feel like? Did you did you want to go into football, or obviously being an intelligent bloke? Did you think no, there's a, a different career? For Allegedly. Me? Allegedly, well, intelligent. Like say, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I mean it's funny listening to you because all the things that um, in terms of that pressure, I probably had that a little bit later in my career when I moved because you well you're probably you known a little bit. At the beginning, it was like an adventure. I was pretty fearless. I didn't, I didn't care about anything. I was just having, I was having, I was living my best life, as the kids say these days. I was having a great time because the day I got to sixteen, and I, I was desperate to play football, desperate to get noticed, didn't get anything. Ended up staying at school, desperate to get noticed. Then didn't happen. Drifted into college, drifted into uni, and then I was fortunate to get picked up by then. Uh, so at a later stage, so. And I've got to say, you know, the difference between football then and now is that football at that time just felt like an extension of uni. I was with my mates, we were having a good time, we were playing a bit of football. And, you know, and you could socialise afterwards as you did back then. So for me, it was only later on in the career, I remember going to dressing rooms like Ewan says, in my 30s, feeling really nervous because then there was, you knew you were, you were not really nervous, but bit like and apprehensive because then you've got to start all over again you've got to get the respect your teammates the new fans and everything so it's just different uh different background and different you know developments if you like but no, i was desperate to play football and always was and always you know felt it i think would have felt i'd missed out on a huge part of it and been lucky still to be in the game obviously now still yeah well that's one of your questions and we might even we might even come back because when you when you said you had a good time, I remember I was on a young lad then, and they were they were going <laughs> the big board, Ify, you and Jacko and Starby. And I'm sure we'll come back. <laughs> on and I, I remember going to Ramsden's Landing, and you forward up there, and I'm not going to go any, any, any further. Can I can I just stop you there? Yeah, it was the big three and, and Simon Trevitt. Burger, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> he tried to get in, did it in Burger. He, he was always on the outskirts, wasn't he? So, we've, got a couple of, we've got a couple of questions. First one from, from, from Andrew. Congrats to Wiffit on his new post with the Premier League. Uh, so, well done. We might even talk about that a little bit. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, fant- fantastic. The first ever uh, first ever goal into Ife that, that the Premier League have, have done. Yeah, so come- it is, mate. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thanks for this. And obviously, including the quality Shout out. quality two goal. But it's a question for, for, for you, Ewan. You can always look after yourself on and off the pitch, but is there anyone you ever mixed mixed with who you wish you hadn't? <laughs> um, I mean, I've played against hard men. I mean, you boys will remember Billy Whitehurst, um, Sheffield... 
Sheffield United, Sunderland, um, an absolute handful. But luckily for me, he he played centre forward, so I never really sort of uh, got <laughs> yeah, amongst yeah. Big Billy. Um, Mick Hartford, I can remember. Uh, uh, Mick Hartford was a proper Geordie hard man, and but I I got to know Mick when I was a young lad growing up in Watford because he was best mates with Tony Cole and our goalkeeper because they both played at Birmingham together. Um, anyway, later down the line, I was playing for Leicester. We were playing at Sellers Park. We were playing against Wimbledon because they were ground sharing. Um, and after about 15 minutes, 20 minutes, our our um, one of our centre halves, Brian Carey, got sent off. And we had no one on the on the bench. I think there was only three subs back then. We had no one on the bench who could, who, who could play centre half. So Brian Little asked me if I could go back, being obviously six foot three, and you know what it's like. Centre for or, or big centre forwards, the late or in their latter years of their career, they sort of t- tend to drop further and further back. So I played, I play centre half when I was when I was a young lad growing up in North Wales. And as soon as he's asked me, I'm like, please, please, Gafford, don't make me go. They got Mick Hartford <laughs> up front, and, and Mick was an absolute. Anyway, as I'm walking past, Mick's just looked at me. He's given me a little wink, and he's gone, "Big fella, don't worry, I won't come anywhere near you." And I thought, oh, <laughs> but, thank God for that. But I think the hardest and probably not intimidating because he he wasn't intimidating because he was an absolute gentleman of a of of of, of a lad, and, um, but so competitive was uh, Darren Moore. Yes, I mean, I I absolutely hated playing against him because he was big, he was strong, he, he wasn't afraid of anything. I, people, I mean, I played against. Neil Ruddock, when I was a, a young lad growing up at Watford and he was at Millwall, and he was just all got gobby and tried to intimidate you that way. And I've, those people have never scared me, really. It's, it's the ones who have got too much to say aren't really going to do anything. It's the, it's the quiet, quiet, silent assassins that I always used to worry about. But you know, they're, they're not saying nothing, but you're going to get it sooner or later. Exactly, and you didn't look. Obviously, you lost your front teeth. We all we all knew you're not playing that. Was that an elbow or was it just? Yeah, a- that, I mean, that was a strange one because I had lost one of my main ones when I was about twelve, thirteen, playing playing with my mates in in the park. Anyway, I was playing in a pre-season pre-season friendly in Exeter, and uh, I think we we had a a, a a wide free kick, and they had a. A, a, a right winger called Darren Robotham, who, who I played and shared a room with for the Welsh 18 squad. Anyway, for some reason, he's picking me up from 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 this set piece. I'm like, well, he's five foot eight. Why? The... Anyway, things have happened. He's caught me flush in the mouth, and I knew I'd done something wrong. Um, and I, there's a lot of blood, and I, I couldn't I couldn't get my tongue through the gap that was normally there with only the. The, the one mission and I said to the physio Billy something, something's not right here and he, he's having a look and he said oh no you're alright you've only cut your cut your cut your lip anyway I finished the game um, and I was in agony after and, and I said to I said to Billy our physio I said Billy can you just get me the doctor because my, my teeth aren't right doctors come in and started playing with them went to the dentist the next day pulled them out and I just thought because the dentist said and it, and it was a dentist in Exeter and he said listen um I can I can save them, but it's gonna be it's gonna be months and months of hard work, and I or I can pull them out now. Um, and I'm thinking, like, I'm six foot three, I'm eighteen, uh, I'm gonna get loads of smacks, as you know, Boothie. You're gonna get yeah, loads of elbows yeah. and, and, and smacks yeah. in the face. I'm like, take them out, <laughs> and, and and they still <laughs> come out. Believe. Yeah. And now you took them out once it then. I was, yeah. it was, I was. Yeah, the, the big toothless centre forward. Exactly. This is this from Adele, Ar- Adele Armitage. Uh, it's a it's a tough question. That I'll just ask it to you. If and she says, who would be on your dream five or seven team out of the players you have played on the same team with? So who's your best five five players? That's it's a oh tough god. That to think. There we go. Might have to come um, back to that one for you to think. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have a think about that if you don't mind. Um, I'll ask. I'll, I'll ask you that at the end. If I, yeah. Got to have a place for me, big mate. You and definitely. But I'll, I'll, I'll see. I'll see if you can squeeze you in, Boovy. But yep. yeah, I love well, a thing. 
I'll be happy to be on bench if you. I'm happy to be on bench. <laughs> you know, right? I'll, I'll my feelings. So, question from uh, Vanessa, I think. <laughs> is he? Is he? Is he I can't. When Warner came in, he cleared out a lot of the established players. How quickly did you know uh, you were not won your way out, and obviously not in his plans? Like you both, obviously both left that same season. I think you were a little bit longer, weren't you? If he did, you stay a few more? Yes. Few more months, but obviously Neil came in and changed it quite quickly, didn't he? Yeah, uh, I think. I think uh, it's funny. I found out years later when I was chatting to Ronnie Jepson. Interestingly enough, he said he told me years later, and this was when I was drilling him when I was with him on. I could told him that he wanted to break up the drinking culture, which I'd not heard before because in those days. It was just a done thing that you'd go out after a game, you'd drink, you know, the bars had alcohol. Very different to now. But that's what he was told. Either he was told that oh, above him or he, or he decided to do it once once he'd been there for some time. So that was interesting to know. All I'd say was that we had a great com- camaraderie. I'm sure we'll come on the Peterborough game, but that was built up over 18 months or two years. Um, of a really good squad of players, I think. If you look at them all individually, really good players. But obviously, I get it. You know, it was from Neil's point of view, he's going to come in and stamp his own authority on the on the game. He brought a lot of players, of you know, non-league lads, of Darren Bullock and uh, Logie, who had hunger, had a lot of hunger about them, and it worked for him. Obviously, you got yourself Booty in the team and a lot of young players, so it worked for him. I can't knock it, um, and you know, it just meant that. Obviously, myself and well, set at the end, and you and a bit earlier were part of that. Yeah, yeah. I don't like to, to hurt your feelings, if it, but there were there was still a lot of drinking going on when. <laughs> you know what? I was just going to. I think that might have just been an excuse. I was yeah. just going to say, right? I was just going to say he wanted to get rid of the drinking culture, so he got rid of me and Ify, and he's brought in Ronnie in. <laughs> and, uh, Ronnie, Ronnie, <laughs> could, Ronnie could drink more than the whole team. Uh, he, he yeah, could, yeah, Ronnie, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Pat Scully from Ireland. My God, that's all. Ronnie yeah. stayed up in Castle Hill, and that's all. That's all he did. Got it. <laughs> I, I, I think. I think it was a bit of a tight. But, but if, if you yeah. want to believe that, you that. That's, that's yeah, exactly. Easy. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it was it was Andy for this. Sorry, Andy. I asked that. Thank you. Uh, just from Ian Wilson. I, how do you stop the rot? in a bad run without getting the manager sacked and have you ever done it? Which I suppose you could go back to, we could go back to, obviously, Owen and coming in, you and your first season, you, you're doing all right. All right. Uh, and then that second season, it completely changed, didn't it? And, it? and we went on to have a, a lot of success, probably more, we should have had more than what we did. That second season, we should have gone up. And, you know, yeah. looking back at my career, um, I, I look at that season in particular with with town, and it still hurts that we didn't go we didn't go up in the top two. Um, we shouldn't have needed the playoffs really. Um, and and my uh, my season at Wolves towards no not towards the end of my career. I was only twenty seven, I think twenty eight when I signed for Wolves. We finished third again, and and once again we, we should have gone up top two. But that I, I, I was because I, I knew we were going to talk about the the the, the ninety one ninety two season. And I was looking through the results and the teams that we played and stuff like that. And I know Brentford won the league. I think what they had they had six no, they have four more points than us. And Birmingham was second on eighty one. Yeah. We had seventy eight. Um, but we only spent, I think, one week in the top two that season. Um, and, I, and and it was oh, sort of halfway through. I think looking at the the stats I saw today. So it's not as if we were we were always in that top two, and we, we you know we were third, we were fourth for, for quite a lot of it. And I was we, we had a, a really bad February March. I think we we won one in about seven or eight, which eventually lost Owen his job. And I've got so much time and respect for for Owen. He's an absolutely great manager, great bloke. Um, I've seen him quite a lot. Um, over recent years, because um, through the work I do for, for BBC Wales, I covered all the Welsh games. And for some reason, we always get the Republic of Ireland in our group. And Owen does a lot of work for the media over over in Dublin. And it's always great to see him. Um, obviously, 
Ian Ross, his assistant, took over. Um, but we we just had a, a really, really good squad. And I think that that squad we had would have done well in the Championship had we not lost to Peterborough. In, uh, you know, we, we had, I was looking, we only conceded 38 goals in 46 games. Our defence was rock solid. Maybe our biggest downfall was and why we didn't finish second. We probably didn't score enough goals that season. That's funny you say, say that. Obviously. And I didn't realise that, and going on to obviously Ian's question about how do you stop the rot, you were in a playoff season and, you know, obviously Owen Ann got, got sacked, Ian Ross took, took over. Uh, but when you had you and you and Starby up front, uh, you if he Starby up front, great, great footballers. You got 34 four, four goals, you and so the, the goal, the goal, the goals were there. Uh, what and I'm, I'm asking you this: what what do you put that second season? I know we talked about the first season, but what did you think about how what changed for you? In what did you do different to get 34 goals? Or were there anything you could that changed? Um. I don't, I don't. Lost a bit of weight, maybe. Got myself super fit. Um, I've, got, I've, got, I've got one, you and you might not not remember this, but obviously I would have. I would have just a junior then. I was in the youth team, and uh, I, I I would always two goals ahead of you all season. And I can remember George. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can. Always, yeah, yeah, always yeah. coming down, and George would be. And we said, oh, we'll be scoring again at weekend. You went, yeah, you might be uh, division's top goal scorer, but you're not on this field town's top goal scorer. <laughs> and, 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 I, and after after that, you were like really, every after every match, we play on a Saturday morning and you'd come and find me if we were playing at home. Did, I, did you score a ball? Did you score? Yeah, I did. If it, uh, you went, yeah, I did. And and I think that made you more determined. And in the end... Mate, honestly, really, that, that was more pressure trying to beat you that season that I've ever had in my career in 20 years of playing. Because I, because obviously, um, me and Ify, you, you, take, you take notice and you keep an eye on on, on, on young lads coming through the system. And, and we knew you were a local lad. And we, obviously, we, we knew that you were a similar type of player to, to, to ourselves. And it was great, mate. It was, it was good, friendly, fun, but competitive as well. And I think you sometimes you always you, you you need something like that, maybe just to drive you, give you that little bit more of an edge. Um, but it was good fun, mate. It was good fun. And how many did you get that season? I got thirty-two, and obviously you just you just uh, yeah, but you played sixty uh, games. You played sixty-one I, games. Mate, I, I, sixty-one games. Oh, where they go? Looking today, there they go. Games. <laughs> so I think I only played about forty on fifty. So. I remember that, and it would be, then that's what it, what it was really wanted. Hey, I tell you what, I tell you what, really, I wish I'd scored as many goals for town as you have, pal. Oh, that's I really do. Great. I really that, that, that is some achievement, I tell you. Ah, oh, brilliant. Thank you. If if it, one, of, one of the games that stands out of that seat, we'll just get on to, before we the playoffs, is, is the Bowie game, obviously. Like, the, with that a big turning point, we fought you 4 0 down against Bowie. And you come back to four on. I think obviously you went and scored a couple of the goals in St- Starby, I think. Starby, yeah. Starby. What a what a game that was to obviously play in and, and come back. Did that then you thought this could be our season? Well, I, I wasn't actually playing in that one. I I done my knee and I think, or something had happened. And uh, I think is that, that another was excuse purchase? here for what is that another excuse here with like yeah, <laughs> the drinking is that in the drinking culture excuse? <laughs> I can't remember. I do know the betting manager at the time, a guy called Mike Walsh, and years later went to Swindon and Mike Walsh was assistant then to Steve McMahon and he still talked about that game all the time and he actually said another five minutes and you'd have beaten us. Yeah. So yeah. it was just this massive turnaround at half time. Big man got a couple, yeah, yeah. and you could tell. You talk about momentum in a game completely swung out. I remember. I think I was on the. I was watching somewhere in, in one of them nineties tracksuits. If you remember them ones, the yeah. ones that don't stand by the fire in them. <laughs> so, um, so sure. I, mem- I remember. I remember watching it, and it was just a great game. It was brilliant watching the lads and bouncing back. So, no, it was a great game and. Um, and they and we had, there was a couple of games. Like I remember playing Birmingham as well, which is a great game. Or was that the year after? No, it was the, that year three two we won at home, and Birmingham were flying that year. So we had a couple of really standout games. 
Um, I always said, and I was asked this before about 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 um, that season. We were quite a young team. If anything did for us at the end, it was just a little bit of know-how management of the game, particularly in the playoffs. You know, we could have beaten, we should have been out of sight at Peterborough. And I've spoken to players there; they they agree as well. We were so much the better team. It was unreal. And 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 you know, to 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 get to to get to that stage where you kind of tank, just take him. I think it was two all in the sure they, they, they nicked one late. Yeah, we should have been out of sight. We battered them, and then and then again we're one nil. When we're one nil up at um at um at Leeds Road in control of the game, and we just couldn't see it through. Um, so it's a, it's yeah. I mean, I know people of a certain age, a lot of town fans of a certain age. Still mm. talk about that game, and it was it was a shame because that team that you mentioned, the really good individuals, really good as a team, would have been very comfortable in the championship. It kind of broke up after that. Chrissy Marsden left. Um, Darby Sam, left, you know, he? Big yeah. Ewan. Yeah, it just broke yeah. up at the time. Unfortunately, um, I think that that was the big disappointment. It was, it was. and and you must say yeah, you're one nil up at. In second leg, you must have thought we'll have we'll to Wembley. This, 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 this is this is it. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it just happened. I've got another game which is a bit. Um, I know we've got a few more questions, but I want to get this off my chest because I, I blame you two. Uh, and I know I've, we mentioned my Spurs shirt at the back, but I think it was the season before we played Blackpool in. in yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah. and I think had it had been called, called off for snow or something for, for fog. For fog, yeah, for fog, yeah. that, that it, uh, and no fog was the the other one. I think you went. I think in my way, probably no what fog. So I think the job had been made, and was yeah. that's we'll right. Spurs, so they'd be what Gaza, Waddle, Lineker, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, and all we had to do was beat Blackpool, who were a, 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 cl- a, a division below us, and and lost two 0 didn't we, on the night? And do you know yeah. what? I think fatally for us. You knew the prize before you played the game, and we yeah. knew it was a massive. And I think it was at home as well, Booth. If, if am I right? Well, it was, yeah, we it was Spurs. Ball, ball at home. Yeah, Spurs. No, at but home. Sorry, yes. Spurs yeah. at home at Leeds Spurs Road, home, yeah. and we we knew it'd, it'd be a sellout crowd. And you mentioned some of the stars, and that added pressure to it. But maybe we thought oh, it's only Blackpool. All we've got to do is turn up. And as you know, you 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 can't go into a game in that mindset, and and. <laughs> As you as you mentioned, we got beat. I mean, you mentioned the Burnley game, the Bury game in, in that season. One that stands out for me, and I'm sure it'll stand out for for if as well. Because um, and it wasn't in the league, believe it or not. It was in the FA Cup, and it was um, Rochdale away. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> and I think yes. it must have been sort of December-ish, I think. And and yeah. the week before, um, Owen had taken us to Torremolinos for the. For, for midwinter season break training or warm weather training or whatever it was. Give up. There were no training there. It was, it was, there. You it was warm. Training. It was very warm. But there weren't much training I'm done. I'm not but arguing. Anyway, we, warm. We've, we've got back. I think must have, we got, got back on, on the Friday afternoon, I think. And we, we were playing there, I think. Yes, it's Scotland, I think. Well, yeah, Rochdale yeah, played Scotland, there. Yeah. And and they, they were like Blackpool in the, in the division below. And, and obviously, the lads have had a few late nights out in uh, in Torremolina, Swengarola, wherever we were. Um, anyway, half time we're losing one ill, aren't we? And Owen has gone absolutely mad. He's effing and jeffing, and there's only one person that's going to get a sack, and that's moi. Wow. And, uh, oh, he was <laughs> he was bouncing off the wall, honestly. And I mean, I've never, and he's rightly so. We were shocking. I've never seen a manager lose his temper so much because we were absolutely we were still on the beach in Spain anyway we've, we've come back in the second half haven't we and, and like I think um, I've scored I've scored the equaliser 1-1 and then Big Ifs popped up with the second and we win the game 2-1 we go into the next round of the cup and all is all is forgiven sort of thing uh, yeah. but yeah that was a that was a scary moment seeing Big Owen uh, uh, lose his temper at halftime. Not not a pleasant it, sight. No, <laughs> just to compare with what Ewan said, like Big Owen, I owed I owed him a lot. I loved him, you know, for giving me a chance and everything. And I, funny enough, I saw him when I was out in Africa on doing the Super Sport 
So we, he must get everywhere, Owen, in the media stuff. Um, but um, but no, he, you know, he's a lovely man, but he had a volcanic temper. If he lost it, you'd stay away, seriously. And he lost it that day with us all, and might be so. Um, but great days. Well, that's what managers did back then, didn't they? That, that's what yeah. you expected, didn't you? You knew what they were like. And Andy, Andy, you've got your hand up there. If you want to ask a question. Hi guys, I just wondered. Hi, Andy. Hi, 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 I, I, I just wondered whether you thought the town fans were noisier now than they were during your playing careers at the club. Because you have obviously I, both had the opportunity to listen to or attend the games when they've been there now. I, 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 I'll, give, I'm, I'll give you in that one first. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've been, I've been to. The John Smith a few times with with work and that, and it is it is a noisy stadium. But whether that's because of the sort of it's one of these modern stadiums and the noise stays in there, whereas Leeds Road was more open and you know open ends and and, and things like that. But I, I tell you what, and I, I remember that uh, the second leg of that playoff against against Peterborough and what oh. the 17,000 17, fans there and. Yeah. Um, I, I remember walking out the tunnel, and I tell you what, it made the hairs on on the back of your neck. Um, and it was a massive advantage to us coming out to that. Yeah, we we, we lost the game, but that's looking back at, at my career. I've got to say that's that has to be right up there with the best atmospheres that I ever played in. Um, and you know, it was a big old fashioned stadium with the the cop the, the opposite to the tunnel side yeah. um but i mean that that was a special special atmosphere when uh, when we played peterborough in that second leg it was yeah yeah, Sorry. yeah no i was going to say the same when town came got back into the the the, the premier league i was i was absolutely made up i was yeah. buzzing <clears throat> and i made sure that I, I put my name down for town games so I did go, obviously, and see them. Um, I, I did go to a couple of the games while, when they were in the Premier League. Oh, my exit just got blocked. I'm sorry, mate. I'm, I'm driving around and around right here. My exit just got blocked. Um, um, <laughs> no, and, and everyone said, I know that you're listening to the pundits now, they're all saying what a great atmosphere it is at, at, at Leeds Road. Fantastic atmosphere and all that. So... So it still made the same noise, but I agree with you. And that day, that that playoff final, you know, we're all disappointed how it ended up. But you take their memories back as best you can. And the atmosphere that day was fantastic. It was amazing. And I still remember it. And even the even the away leg at Peterborough, yeah. I remember, I think it was yeah. a warm day. And all you could see as you came to the stadium was town fans. Or they completely took over Peterborough, uh, the stadium and everything. So... No, they were good memories. Obviously, it didn't great, didn't end up great, but you still keep hold of them and treasure them a little bit. Brilliant, brilliant. Just this is a funny question. There's never had this question. It's from James Macbeth. How common was it for players to smoke at half time or before a game back then? Did you see this stop at the end of your career? Uh, I didn't. I didn't see. It, sorry, I, I didn't see it too often. The only the only player that I can sort of remember um, was Keith Curl the former Man City yeah. um, and, yeah, and, and I, I spent a bit it. yeah I spent a bit of time with Keith when he was uh, when, I, when I was at Wolves um, and yeah he used to smoke for fun he really did it. but you know I mean there's that myth that if you smoke you can't you, you can't you can't run you can't be fit you can't sprint he was an absolute flying machine was, was Curly uh, but he, he was an absolute he was, he was an athlete as well do you know what i mean he was he, he, he was chiseled out of, out of stone um, he was strong he was quick uh, he, great energy so but yeah he was he was an absolute chain smoker if it, I'm, sure, I'm sure jepson was a smoker as well I'm sure there was a couple i don't, I don't remember i don't want to I don't want to out them, but I'm sure Ronnie Jepson was and a couple of the... Well, you just have it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know you don't want it, but you just said it. Yeah, no, just Ronnie, Ronnie, would have been, Ronnie would have been smoking. 
Yeah, I'm sure he was, yeah. Yeah, he was. And they were, they were um, at my event, they were Ronnie, uh, Pat Scully, and, and they weren't, to be honest, not many. When I went to Sheffield, yeah. when I used to allow me for name dropping, Des Walker, he was his... He oh, was, yes, yeah. His work, like Des Walker, he, he, he had a lot. And then when I went down to Spurs, I couldn't believe it. My first training session, like we're all in changing rooms, and, and about six or seven lads just walked out. They were Ben Thatcher, Steve, uh, I think it was Stephen Carr, Chris Armstrong, uh, the, uh, Stephen Everson. They were, and, and I said, well, where are they going? And they were, go, they were all going round corner for the fag, and this was a big training ground. <laughs> it's like being at school. <laughs> and they were just all they were just all there smoking like an open mile so it's not like this up north. <laughs> <laughs> it, oh, if, it, if it, I'm going to ask uh, another question, obviously you came, you came back to to Woodersfield uh, under Jacko. What was that a, an easy decision? Obviously, I know Jacko is one of your both uh, great friends. Uh, I'm surely when it rang you up, I'm sure you didn't. You obviously jumped at it. No, I mean, uh, by that time, I knew I was finishing the end of the season. I'd had a year <coughs> left on my contract at Sheffield United. It's not me Achilles, which is bad enough at any age, but certainly certainly the case when you're 35, as it was then. So I knew I was finishing. It just, I could have stayed at, at Tramere where I was. I was, I had an eye on, I had an eye on, the, you know, the end days, if you like. But um, obviously, Jack, we all know Jack how persuasive he was. And he wanted, and a little bit, a little bit of me was a bit like what I said at the, at the, at the right at the beginning. You're a little bit apprehensive about letting people down. Jacko, because he was a friend, um, Huddersfield, because it was where I started off my career, and because you realise you're not, you, you can't do the things you can do. Then, you know, so so that was my biggest apprehensive. And going back to Keith Curl, I could have stayed for another year. Keith offered me a, a year at Mansfield after that. To, after that year at, um, at town, but I just yeah. I knew my legs had gone. I just knew my legs had gone. It says no way, thanks, Curly, but no, I'm done. So I almost it was almost reluctance to come back for that reason, but obviously it worked out well. They won the playoff, the semi final against Lincoln, which is another great day, um, and then and then um, the, okay. the final at, at, at Cardiff, which was fantastic. So and it was nice. It bookended my career really. Started that town and, fin- and finished. Can I can I ask you, Fit? Because this obviously in, in the playoff semi final, uh, you played in the first leg, uh, scored down at Lincoln. Played in the second leg, and then in the final, we've all looked at the team sheet and look. Obviously, we, we knew who the first eleven were, but you look at the team sheet and you weren't even on the bench. Like how how did that make you feel? I was absolutely. I was absolutely gutted at the time, honestly, because I thought that would be my last game ever. And obviously it turned out the playoff semi-final was. So I, I kind of, and me and Jacko, it's been well said, we kind of fell out a little bit. We didn't talk for a while after it. Um, cause I, and I probably invested it, as you do, we think it's your last game. You invest a lot into it emotionally. You think, right, it's my last game. I'm going to, I'm going to be on the bench at least. I'll get I'll get on you. You start picturing the game the night before. Come off the bench and I'll score. I don't know a winning penalty or the last minute winner, and off you walk into the sunset. And it doesn't quite work out like that. But I kind of understand. And you know, I haven't been a manager since then. Understand what um, you know, Jacko. He had to make a decision. I'm not say I ever agreed with it because I thought there was a there was a there was a kind of place for me, not just on sentiment, but because it might have had an effect, but it wasn't to be. Yeah. And I, I try not to look back too much. I was gutted, actually, for those few days afterwards, and I felt a little bit detached from the celebrations, if I'm being honest. Because as, as footballers, you are selfish a little bit, and you want to want to feel like you've taken part, and it didn't feel like you've taken part. And it's only years later when you think, actually, OK, I scored in the semi-finals, I played both legs, so you did play a part, if not the final. Mm-hmm. And you take something from that. But at the time, yeah, I was gutted, but definitely. Definitely, yeah. Cheers, thank you. There's a question from Andy Furness. How did both would how would you both get on if you were playing today? Uh-huh. This I, question gets asked a lot. This question does get, get asked a lot. Um 
and, and people think because you because you played in the in a in a different era that you wouldn't be able to play today, um, and it it frustrates me and makes me a little bit angry if if I'm if I'm honest. Um, could I could I play in in today's game? Could I score goals in in today's game? I think I could. Yeah. Okay, I, you know, I was never quick. I, I relied on 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 other strengths. Um, but if you like like if or you boo, if you put the ball in in the right area in the box, you know we'll, we'll score goals. You know, definitely. Uh, I mean. So much emphasis on the style of play and, and 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 this and that, and because you're a you're a six foot three, old fashioned old school target man, um, typical English centre forward or Welsh, if you like, you couldn't play the the attractive football that these clubs do now. You know, we, we made good careers in for 15, 20 years. Of course, you can adapt your game. Of course, you can improve. Of course, you can. You can try different things. Sorry, I'll get off my high horse now. I'll get off my high horse now. No, no, I, I, agree. Totally I agree with you. Some, I, some, you know, I'm probably better off in funny ways look, stepping back and looking at both of you. So, big you, and honestly, listen, I know he's my mate, and it, it sounds like I'm, I'm saying it. I still talk. When I was coaching, when I was coaching strikers, I'd have Big Ewan's movement in the back of my head because, and you tell me, Ewan, you'd think all of his goals at the back post um, pulling off, and, and he did score some, but he got loads going across people. He, he used to do that lovely little double movement, one for the one for the defender, one for the one for himself, yeah. score goals. So his move, his, Big Ewan's movement was as good as anyone's. Trust me, as good as anyone's who, who I watched play or played with. And I play with some good strikers after that. So that's timeless. And yourself, Boovy, back stick, 100%, 100%. But you score goals, getting across people. All the things you talk about, say, like uh, Olivier Giroud now holds the ball up well. But he doesn't just score goals at the back post. He gets across mm -hmm. people. That's timeless. That In any era, that still count, That still stands you in good stead. So I, 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 I've got no doubt about it. I think it's too easy an argument to make. And even the off the field stuff, you know, we wouldn't, we probably wouldn't prepare. Of course, we wouldn't prepare the same way, but we'd probably be better prepared in some ways. Some of the sports science is so much better now. We wouldn't be bloody doing lapping around the pitch anymore. You do a lot of fast feet and all them things that would make you quicker, sharper, a little bit more, bit more dynamic. So, listen, I think that's too easy, you know, different areas. We'd have played in any area and scored goals, definitely. Definitely, and the and clubs are now crying out for big target man as well. Big lads, they, 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 they're dying beat, aren't they? They're not there, but they, they still got a place to play. A question, Definitely. sorry, a question from John Pigeon, and this is this is my favorite story. If a, if you had to do the 100 meter challenge again, <laughs> you'll be better prepared. Come on, if you've got to tell us a story, <laughs> what a story that is. Well, I wouldn't take Ewan and Jacko with me. That's the first <laughs> thing I wouldn't do. I might have a chance of winning. I mean, you all know the story. I, I actually if, if, it, if it tell us, because I love it. I okay, I'll, I'll try and I'll try and whittle, I'll try and whittle it down. So obviously, it was the run below sprint. Back in the day, I was reasonably quick. Qualified for the final at Wembley. Took, takes place just before the Carlin Cup final. Team Forest and somebody, I can't remember who it was. It was a good Forest team of the day, Mal Brian Clough and all that, that era. But we're doing 100 meter sprint in boots the day before, on the, uh, just an hour before kickoff. Now, we check into this hotel. I say we, me, Ewan, and bloody Jacko check in. Every other person is there with the wife or the, and the, or, or the partner or the mum and dad. So straight away, I think, this isn't right. My missus, bless her, she wasn't well. She was pregnant and she stayed home. Ewan and Jacko didn't take a moment to say, we'll turn up. We'll just have, we'll just turn up. Just some moral support. So I went, yeah, that's fine. The night before, I swear, all of them, they had a little, had a bite to eat, tucked up in bed, nine o'clock. I, I was planning to do the same. Knock on the door. 
Jacko and you and come on, we'll just I think he needs us to relax before the big occasion tomorrow. We'll just have a couple of drinks. Nah, 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 I want to do it properly. Yeah, no, you'll do it properly. We'll have you back in bed, 10 o'clock, no problem, just for a quick hour. This is the this is central London. Well, if you remember the scene from Mike Bassett, you know, where he takes his shirt off and he's dancing on the table. That was me at two o'clock in the morning in some bar in central London. Not exactly ideal preparation, I grant you not. So turn up on the, on the day of the final. I'm in shocking state. I'm in all. I'm in a shocking, shocking state. By the way, Jacko's now imploring me that I've got to win because the players have put the players' cool money on me. So not only has he dragged me out, he's 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 dictated that we've got to win. Everyone's banking on us. Don't let us down. Don't let us down. You might have told me that 12 hours ago, Jacko. Anyway. <laughs> So I get to the get I get to the final. I'm still feeling shocking. Now this is a true story. I swear, they said to us all as we're lining up, we're going to say on your mask, get set, go, and we'll do it like that. So everything's really tight for the TV and all that. Everything's got to, to go straight away. I swear, I'm the only one doing a crowd start. I think I'm in the Olympics, don't I? I'm doing a crowd start. I would have got me starting blocks if I'd found them. But anyway, I sat there doing a the coast start. Everyone stood up. They shout, on your marks. And I'm waiting for him to say set. And he goes, on your marks. Bang, go. The gun goes off. I'm like, <laughs> still in my haunches. Everyone else is 40 metres down the track. I'm not lying you, and I'm a, that's exactly how uh, it was. 40 metres down the track. I thought I had to walk off or just keep going. You got beat by a oh, postman, mate. if it's true. All right, you got beat by a postman, and he finished, and you were still in the blocks. <laughs> you know these, you know these sprinters. They go to be a bang. Even <laughs> if didn't even hear the bang. <laughs> and to be fair, I've got, I've got to defend myself and Jacko here because oh, Helen, oh, what? He, he, Helen, if's wife, couldn't go because she was poorly. He begged me and Jacko to go because I think it was only the. <laughs> It was only the second time he'd ever been to London, and he was in his pants. <laughs> so me and Jacko said, "Yeah, okay, if yeah, we'll, we'll we'll go, we'll come with you. We'll look after you. We'll make sure you're well wow. prepared." And he, and he was well wow. prepared, believe you me. Wow, wow, that's a different he, take on the story. I'm going to leave it at that. He he lost us a small fortune because we'd saved up all this money from from doing the the the, the players' bar. You know, we we yep. did our own bar and everything. And we had a good few hundred quid, and he lost it as all. He lost it as all, mate. And we will never forgive him. That's why Jacko it didn't was... play him in, the, in that Wembley exactly. in that <laughs> final that thing. Jacko told me. <laughs> Can I just say, on the Monday, that was the longest drive into training <laughs> I've ever, ever had. Mm. I drove in. I didn't want. I wanted to ring in sick. I knew the dog's load of abuse I was going to get, and I just thought. As I'm driving there, I'm trying to go as slow as possible. I'm thinking, just get this over with. I just need to... Nothing about training. Nothing about the game. We put out a game on Tuesday. <laughs> Didn't even enter my head. I'm just thinking, I've got to get through training. I remember walking through... They all give me the flipping... Um, they, they all played the fifth, didn't they? Vow of silence. Not a word from them when I walked in. Every single one of them just turned their back on me. I think they had an effigy of me burning. Up in the up, up in the dressing room. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> if you right then, put, put it straight. If you would have heard the gun and you'd have gone straight away, would you have won? I'd have, I'd have been close. I'd have been close. I'm telling you, I would have been close. You know them jeans my sister's got, yeah. and um and and the the Olympian. I've got. The, I had those jeans back in the day. I could have been a contender. <laughs> I thought you were talking about. I thought you were talking about your Levi's. If <laughs> <laughs> I think it would about seven hundred quid on it in the pool. It, it was a lot of money. It was a lot of money. Because I tell it was you what, a lot of money. I think our players' bar was probably the most expensive place to have a pint in Huddersfield <laughs> at the time. Money. <laughs> it was money. It was. Well, yeah. it, it was good as apprentices. I know we're moving off a little bit as apprentices. You always, on a Friday, you always used to get one of apprentices to go and vacuum up and clean it up. And you'd yeah. give, give us five quid. So when you're on £29.50 a week, we're all queuing up on a Friday afternoon to, to clean players' <laughs> bar out. 
if it, I feel days. like I, if I feel like I'm picking on you, but there's another question here. And it, Come on, keep picking, keep picking yeah, on him, yeah, Boozy. Keep picking. And I, I would append, apprentice, and I think we mentioned about Blackpool, and it was a foggy day, but you lost your contact lens, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Stop no, the game. there's more Stop than one the occasion. Big Ewan remembers he was playing probably both times. I lost it. And and the the, the 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 unbelievable thing is I found it or someone, one of the opposition players found it for me. So, you know, listen, well, nowadays, Ewan and wears concert lenses. I'm sure they give a spare pair to the physio and, and he, I did end up doing that. But at the time, I think I had one pair. So, stopped the game. I've got to find these lenses and the game doesn't carry on. Till I stop this. Can you imagine that now on Gillette Soccer Saturday? Uh, we've got a late we've got a late kickoff Leeds Road. They're still looking for the contact lenses 10 minutes in, 10 minutes in. So no, it, uh, that's how it was. Uh, I, I lost them both times and I found them both times. <laughs> but I can remember the apprentices, we were sent out at half time to find if he's contact <laughs> lender. We thought, oh, when do we start? <laughs> oh, brilliant. I'm going to come back if you deal at an international one. But Ewan, obviously you played 15 times for Wales. Uh, must uh, and you played three times when you were playing at Huddersfield. So it must have been a massive achievement, a dream. And, and a big achievement when you you think you've got Ian Rush, Dean Saw, Saunders, uh, and Mark Hughes in front of you. So I was I was born in the wrong era when I really um, <laughs> and and when you've got those three, especially Mark Hughes and Ian Rush, when you've got those because. Back back then, we you know most teams played two up front, and I'm not going to get in before then. I'm I'm a realist. Um, you, know, you could you could watch, you could learn. Although saying that, we've talked about like having a few drinks and 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 and, and back in in sort of that era, they could put it away. Those two, Rushy and, <laughs> and, and Marcus. But I, and I tell you what, they were the worst trainers you will ever ever see. But you, you knew on, on match day, they would just turn it on and off like a tap. And, um, you know, it was, it was the proudest moment of, of my career when I, when I got my first cap against Holland in, uh, in 89. And I can remember, I think, I'm not sure what cap it was, but I was at Huddersfield at the time. Uh, and a real, real special moment for myself. And I, I still remember it today. And I've, I've got photos of, of myself being presented with with one of my Welsh caps by the great Dennis Law. Hey. I think he was. I think he was at a game, um, and I think someone at the club asked if he would present me with my Welsh cap, and he he he, he gladly did it. And you know what an honour to to receive that from someone who's achieved as much as what Dennis Law did uh, for Huddersfield, for Man U, for Man City, for Scotland. You know, it was a massive, massive honour for me to, to get my cap off him. Brilliant, brilliant. It is, and I say, to, to have 15 for your country, fantastic. If it, I'd like to say, obviously, you represented Scotland. Uh, but it's you, a bit harsh, isn't it? It is, sorry, I do, yeah. I tried to have a look on all Wikipedia and see if I could find your international record. But, but one, obviously, how did you become the manager of Ethiopia? I, I couldn't believe it when I saw that, If How did come about? Uh, that came about because I was um, I'd gone for an interview so this is the time uh, you know when you're on the you're on the medic go around a little bit looking for work and, and trying to stay in the in the profession as a coach or manager or whatever and I'd gone for an interview with um, uh, an academy in Nigeria actually um, and, I, and I'd done a bit of academy I'd done head of academy at Swindon so I was up for it, and I was up for the challenge. My kids are teenagers then. I'd split up for my ex-wife now, and I was kind of had that little bit of freedom to kind of go anywhere. And even even when I went to work with Jacko in Lincoln, I was in I was living in Bristol, and you know at that time I didn't care. I'd just go and I'd go, you know, work it out. And even Lincoln, um, I'd leave on a Monday, leave on a Monday morning, come back Saturday after the game. Yeah. Obviously difficult. Difficult to do that from Ethiopia, I've got to say. But so that was that was a bit that was a bit more of a wrench. But no, I just like the challenge. Who have your thoughts? Yeah. And the, and by the way, who gets to? How many people get to be a national team manager as well or head coach? So so basically, 
I'd been for this interview, didn't get the job with the Academy in Nigeria, but there was a panel there, um, and there was LMA members, a guy called Dave Richardson from the LMA, he was on the panel. One of the panel members, a friend of mine now called Dave Amigi, he said, oh, I know of you, because you, I remember you at Swindon with George and Dar, you two playing together. Um, I might have some opportunities further down the line to stay in touch. And I just went, yeah, yeah, no problem. But um, I, I, I didn't really take much notice of it. And then he did, he ran me out of the blue. And I think I was just working uh, in a charity, for the charity in Bristol at the time. He said, will you come to the Premier League headquarters in London? So I did, I went along. There was the Federation of Ethiopian chairman was there. He said, what, they'd been out of FIFA. He wanted a, a British coach. Um... Me being having Nigerian heritage was a thing as well for the big thing for them. And it was a big thing for me as well. So I thought, yeah, proud as punch, you know, for my family as well. Um, and so that's how it came about. I went over there for a weekend to watch a game. Unbeknown to me, they'd already announced me as um, the, the head coach. And I thought I was just going over there as a recce. So when I left on the Monday, your thoughts had turned down the job, <laughs> which I hadn't. <laughs> But I was still just, you know, finalising a few details. But no, I love my love me time over there. I've got some lovely memories. Uh, my time over there playing all these countries in 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 uh, Tanzania, um, Nigeria as well. Back in Nigeria, I really love my time. Brilliant. Yeah, I can't speak highly enough of it. Ah, fantastic! That's great to hear. We've just got a couple of a few minutes left, uh, and. I know, obviously, you're both still in football. If it, we are obviously both commentating, referee, assistant, VAR. What are your thoughts on VAR? And obviously, and then the referee, I'm sure a lot of you saw the Ipswich game yesterday with the referee. Uh, how do you assess that, if you and, and you and what do you think about VAR? It, you and you go first. How long have you got? <laughs> <laughs> We've got a few um, minutes. I mean, it. it frustrates the life out of me at times because I think people watch football to be entertained. Um, some of these offside decisions are baffling, I really say. I mean, when they take so much time and they, they get, get these lines on the pitch, and if it takes that long, I think you've got to give the benefit of the doubt to the attacking side. I really, you know, people want to see goals being scored. Um, I would hate it now if, if I was playing because you don't know whether to celebrate or not because if you score a goal you know there's someone near Heathrow who's going to have a look closely at it on a monitor hundreds of miles away and, and if he decides that your fingernail is in an offside position even though you can't score with your hand it's going to be given offside I, I think I think it's a good idea I think it's the rules, I think, that need to be looked at and changed to, to, to a degree. Because I think there is a place in, in, in the game for something like this. You know, we, we've seen it's worked in other sports. Why, why does it have to be so... What's the word I'm looking for? Um, Rigid? Oh, I can't, yeah, not, yeah, but what, controversial. Mm, I think that why, yeah. why does it have to be so controversial in football when it's it's not in in other sports? Uh, but I, I think someone needs to sit down with the powers to be and and sort of just thrash out the the, the rules to, to certain certain elements of VAR because it, it clearly is is destroying the game. And and, and I and I I look at referees. I, I sympathise. It's an, it's an impossible job. They they do need. They do need um, some help. I think VAR could be a good tool for for referees. Uh, but yes, yeah, some some of the decisions. I mean, since since day one, it's uh, it's left me pulling my hair out. I'm afraid. Yeah, yeah. And what are your thoughts? If you obviously you're, you're right in, in the thick of it, there. Yeah, even before it came in, we we got a lot of training. We went down to Stockley Park, showed how it would work. But there is a world of difference between do it, and it really is. It's like a, it's like a, just a room, a pretty sterile atmosphere, and they're deciding on it. And there's no, there's no link to the atmosphere of the game. We're you know 200 miles away potentially, so I don't know whether they look at that again. I remember, I think it was rugby league. They used to do it from 
a monitor in the stand, didn't they? You know, further up where no one could get to them. And it wasn't as sterile as doing it in Stockley Park because you're not making so decisions that are so detached. I'm a, I'm a little bit, I don't know what's the word, ambivalent about it because I think for offsides and I've seen the one even, you know, where Firmino's foot keeps the Leicester yeah. play on side on, and you think, uh-huh. well, you know, his first thing seems to give offside and then he looks at it and goes, well, actually he was onside. I'm a, I'm a, I can understand that as frustrating as it is. And by the way, it's got to be quicker. The decisions that took, and I've been in the stadium sometimes when we had the fans there, Minute, minute twenty, and I'm and I'm doing me nothing as an assessor. <laughs> Why is it taking this long? And it really does my head in. You know that's unnecessary. Um, so I can appreciate that. But if it's done quickly, you know, reluctantly, I can kind of see for offsides. I do feel sorry f- for refs, though. I do. The reds yeah, must be falling off. So difficult, isn't it? Thanks. And what would you have done? I don't know if anybody saw the the in switch guy and the referee. Oh yeah. gosh. If, if you were assessing that, at what? What would you say to the ref? <laughs> that is a complete is your P, headlock. Is your P45? <laughs> yeah, listen, it, it'll do well to come back to that. One thing I will say, and it sounds like I'm, I've, I've completely turned on my head since I stopped playing and became a assessor. Everyone's entitled to the odd head loss moments. I've had a few in my time. And I'd hate to think he lost his career because out of it. Obviously, he'll have to take his punishment, whether he gets stepped down for the rest of the season or whatever, I don't know. But everyone's entitled to a mistake and come back. I, w- I was saying to the guy, the you and the other, I was disappointed that the manager at Switch at the time couldn't have been a little bit more sympathetic after the game. He almost threw him under the bus. Twenty Straight after the game, yeah, I can understand. We're all passionate and especially as a manager. But 24 hours later on, later on there's no need to throw a, ma- a referee under the bus. And I was, yeah, a little bit disappointed when when I heard him interviewed this afternoon on the matter. I think, you know, everyone's entitled to a mistake and to be allowed to come back. That was, that was my take on it. Brilliant, brilliant. I know we've we've gone all, all the time and I just, we mentioned it a bit earlier, uh, Ify, but it's obviously an important role for the Premier League. You're the first head of equality, diversity, inclusion. How important that, that role is now? Because you see a lot of, the Premier League players recently have been, been targeted as well, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it is. It's a new role, so obviously I'll have to see when I get there. I mean, I think I think the one thing that's what's happened recently is that all the, everyone in football now wants it out the game, and it's just the social media companies you have to target, and they're not doing enough. It's just a fact. We, you know, without getting all t- technical, we don't work with tech companies who, who can will actually tell you. No, you can do this, this and this. And they're not doing I don't think it's in their interest sometimes. So I think that's got to be tackled, whether through bills and parliament or legislation. And it's got to be done. But it's not just obviously racist abuse. There's loads with James McLean. So he, gets, he got targeted for, for you know, uh, sectarian abuse. And it's just like we're always saying, no one on the call would walk into their place of work and have someone abuse them. They just wouldn't. You wouldn't go and watch a band and the, the band wouldn't keep playing if, the fa- if everyone was booing or go to the theatre and everyone stood there booing. You wouldn't expect the, the actors to carry on. It's the same. It is the same. You know, they're entitled to, to the games. That, listen, the games are about players. It's about those who play and those who pay, the fans and the players. No, everyone else is just flitting around the margins. And if the moment something's happening, the players aren't in uh, the, uh, a fair and decent environment to play. You've got to look at it and you've got to say, root it out. And that's what's happening now. I'm not as big on social media, I'm not. But everyone under the age of 30, they've grown up with it. And that's how it is. And social media is a massive part. It's been great in so many respects. It's how we all communicate these days. But them companies can do far more than what they're doing. And that's my take on it. Um, it's got to be rooted out. Brilliant, brilliant. And, and we all wish you all the best with that. If you, if you say so. Thank you, baby. So congratulations. Thanks, that. I do apologise. I've just had a look at the time and we, we have run over, so I do apologise. I was going to ask you what them Saturday nights in Ramsden's, give us some of them stories. But <laughs> go on. Go on. <laughs> we'll, we'll save it for another time, baby. Really. Exactly. So, if it, you would, can I just thank you both for, for giving up your time tonight? We, Absolutely, really appreciate it. If you've been you, pal. tonight and you've 
you're still you're very still going. welcome you're both being I've just, I've really just pulled in oh, oh good perfect timing we've had a lot yeah. of comments saying thank you very much for everybody listening they really enjoyed it so on behalf of everybody here and, and everybody will be watching on on, on, on the yeah. website we just thank you both for, for so much we really appreciate it fantastic pleasure mate cheers Booty thanks oh, for asking us pleasure. fantastic no, thanks, Booty. Just, thanks for asking cheers man and obviously yes, next, next week we've got a uh, it's, we're going back to the administration era. After, obviously, after Jack, so we've got John Stead, John Worthington, and Nathan Clark joining us next Wednesday, and that'll be seven, seven till, till eight. So, thank you all for, for coming. Fingers crossed. I know we mentioned the Swansea game on Saturday. Let's get three three points, and we can all be a le- little bit happier at the weekend. So, thanks all for joining. If you want to come in, join again, we'll just send you the Zoom call next week, and it'd be great to see you all.